There are thousands of choices when it comes to holsters. Which one is gonna work best for you? All right, we're here today to talk about holsters. Man, there's thousands of different options out there when it comes to holsters. And a lot of them are freaking absolutely useless. Why am I doing this video? Because I am sick of students coming out to the range and having a holster for their weapon that doesn't work at all. It's, it's literally just complete junk. I get it, man. There's so much confusion around holsters because there are so many options. And it's always amazing to me that companies will put out products that have zero application in really any scenario across the board. So if you don't know what you're looking for, if you don't know what you're buying and the different applications, uh, the different brands, the different retention methods, uh, you end up with an old Uncle Mike's uh, holster from, from the local pawn shop and then you go out and try to train with it and you're like, oh man, this thing doesn't work, right? So that's why we're filming this video to hopefully give you guys an idea of, uh, of what's good brands uh, and each how each of them applies in, in different scenarios depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, we'll start down here on this end of the table and we'll dig into these things, right? The first three holsters that I have right here, uh, they don't have any retention, okay? So these holsters down here on the end, neither one of these actually uh, have something, a mechanism that locks the gun into the holster, okay? Talk about the, different, that, the difference between the three that we have right here. This holster right here, this is a Kydex holster made by T2G. They make really, really great custom uh, holsters uh, for all different types of weapons. Now, this holster right here, again, no retention, and it's actually got this clip on the back that's made to clip right onto your belt, okay? So these would all three be outside the waistband. This one's made to clip on the belt. These other two have the Safari Land QR, what's that, cameraman? QLS system, the fork that's made to clip into a drop leg holster on a gun belt, all right? So these are all three outside the waistband. The difference between the three, well, not only is the, the, the mounting system different between these two, um, the material's also different. Uh, this is good Kydex, it's got a good liner in it that is going to keep your gun from rubbing and, and wearing the finish off your weapon. Um, now, these, these holsters with no retention, these are going to be used more or less for uh, competition shooting, right? Uh, something that you don't have to uh, disengage some safety mechanism to draw the weapon. They're gonna be faster. They're gonna be faster. The downside is if you are wearing these in a, in a true, combat scenario and where you're moving, you're running, you're getting up and down, you're no telling what you might be doing, the gun's not locked in the holster so it can fall out at any time. All right, so that's the downside. You, you have the added speed, but you, you, the weapon's not secure. Someone could even come up and just grab the weapon out of the holster uh, and they don't have to defeat any sort of retention mechanism. Uh, you'll see one thing that's different about this weapon here that's got the FN uh this holster right here this holster has this little knob right here so in order to kind of alleviate some of the the issues that we have without having retention the weapon potentially coming out of the holster you've got this little speed knob right here to where you can actually turn this knob and tighten the holster down on the weapon so if you know if you're shooting competition and you're shooting a stage that uh you're gonna have to do some running and some moving you would go ahead and tighten up that speed knob and that's gonna lock the weapon in the holster a lot tighter than something like this that you would have to have an Allen wrench to actually make that adjustment. Okay, so that's your no retention, competition shooting outside the waistband. It's fast, but someone can take your gun from your, 
your gun could fall out of the holster, whatever it may be. Those are the disadvantages there. Let's move on to now outside the waistband holsters that have retention, the different types of retention, all right, and different brands. This first one right here is made by the same company down here on the end, the T2G, and you'll see this holster has what we call a safety bail, all right? So when you put your weapon in the holster, you flip this bail up and it locks the weapon in place. Uh, this pistol, if this bail is flipped up, is not going to come out of the holster. It's super secure uh, retention method, and I actually ran a Safari Land holster with a safety bail on it while I was in the SEAL teams, a drop leg holster. This one's set up with the QLS system too for Safari Land. We run all these, these on all our holsters because we're always switching guns, so we're switching holsters when we're switching guns and reviewing different guns. So that's one type of retention, the safety bail. Uh, it's really secure. It's probably a little slower than the other types of retention that we have here. These two holsters that we have right here in the center are made by Safari Land. All right, these holsters, the retention mechanism is right here on the thumb. You simply move that little lever back and your weapon pulls free. All right, when you drop the weapon in the holster, it's locked in there. It's not going in anywhere. All right. This is a really convenient place to have the mechanism to defeat your retention because when you go to get that nice high grip on the pistol, your thumb just falls right there on that lever. All right, I really, really like that. It's super secure. It's a little more mechanical, I would say, than the safety bail. The safety bail is super simple. Um, you know if it's up or down and I like simplicity. Uh, this one's a little more mechanical. The moving parts are actually internal. Uh, you can see inside the holster the actual locking mechanism. But these are great holsters with retention, these Safari Land holsters. This one right here is the exact same, same type of retention from Safari Land. Uh, these are probably my favorite holsters, retention holsters that are on the market, okay? Um, I don't know the exact model of them. But yeah, Blake will add it in the show notes. You'll see this one right here has, instead of the QLS, it has this bracket or this mount right here. It's made to mount on a belt. Um, that actually gives you a little bit of drop if you're wearing this holster with this instead of having the QLS system mounted to a drop leg bracket. I, I always, you guys know, I like to have, I like to drop my weapon off of my belt line because if you're training two gun out on the range and you have some sort of kit on, if you don't get the weapon down off your belt line, if this weapon's sitting up here, as the T2G down there would be sitting if it's attached directly to my belt, when I go to draw my pistol out, it's likely to get caught on my kit, okay? So I like that. That's probably my second favorite mounting system uh, in terms if we're gonna put this directly on the belt that we're wearing on our pants. Those two are the same. This holster down here, this is made by Black Hawk. Okay, we looked at the Safari Land holsters had the retention uh, mechanism or the, the lever right there at the thumb. This one made by Black Hawk has it here on the finger. All right, this provides great retention for the weapon. Uh, the only thing is, it's kind of unnatural to hit that mechanism with your index finger when you go to draw your weapon. Um, it is sufficient, but in my opinion, because of the location of that button versus it being right there on the thumb, it's not near as good as the retention mechanism on the Safari Land. You'll also see on this Black Hawk holster, uh, it's a paddle holster. All right, so it's kind of a different way to mount it to your belt. This part of the paddle is meant to go inside your pants, all right? So this sits right up against your body, and then it's got a couple little teeth down here on the bottom. That, so when you draw the weapon, if you happen to miss that button and you pull up, it's not gonna pull the holster outside of your, your waistband, all right? Um, I've used these little Black Hawk holsters for years. They're, they're really cheap, they're easy to find, they're durable, 
uh, but it's definitely number, it's the last in the examples that we have right here with retention. These are going to be the best option, the fastest, most effective. Uh, this is going to be your most durable, super effective, um, but a little slower than these. And then this is going to be your bottom of the line in terms of outside the waistband holster with retention. Moving down to the end of the table, the last holsters that we're going to talk about today are going to be inside the waistband holsters. Man, there's all, again, just like all the other ones, there's all different types of choices of what you're going to wear for in the waistband holster. Uh, what that means is that this, the actual body of this holster is going to go inside your pants. And the only thing on the outside is going to be this clip right here. I would say the most important part of a inside the waistband holster is the actual clip itself that secures the holster uh, in the waistband, all right? What's going to happen a lot of times if this clip is flimsy and it just doesn't hook into your belt well on the outside, you're going to go to draw the weapon uh, from wherever you're carrying it in your waistband and the entire holster is going to come out of your waistband with the gun still in it, all right? So that clip needs to be nice and firm. It needs to have a good hook on it. Uh, this is a really, really cheap one here that works pretty well, made by CYA Supply Company. You can buy these off of Amazon, and um, it actually secures the weapon well in there, and the clip's nice and sturdy. Another thing about these inside the waistband holsters is since this is going to be the actual side of the weapon is going to be pressing against your body, you want to have good coverage on the weapon. You don't want the you don't want the metal part of the gun pressing into your body or that rough surface of the grip right there. Uh, you want that to be covered as much as possible. All right. You'll see on this one. This is another inside the waistband holster. This one has two clips that are very secure. Uh, you can adjust the angle on this. This is made by Galco, uh, model P A R. 834 Bravo. This has two clips, so you have better, you know, it's locked in better. Um, they got big hooks that actually go into the brackets. Uh, you've got this little claw right here that actually helps press the holster back into your body, so it keeps it tight against your body. And then you have the actual uh, raised portion up here that keeps the surface of the gun off of your skin. Okay, so this is a great in the waistband holster. I think this was made for a Glock 43X. But um, a lot of personal preference plays into that. Just make sure, again, that you have some good hook, hook clips that aren't going to allow the holster to come completely out of your waistband when you draw your weapon. And make sure you have some good material here that's going to keep the surface of the gun off of your skin. That way it's not pressing into you, rubbing you, and you're not sweating all over it and getting it all nasty. All right, so just to recap, we talked about our holsters with zero retention, uh, the advantages and disadvantages. We talked about that little speed knob right there and how that can come in handy uh, if you're shooting competition in different stages so you can tighten this thing and lock it in the holster a little better. We looked at uh, basically three different types of holsters with retention. We've got the safety bail. Uh, we've got Safari Land's proprietary locking mechanism right there at the thumb. Uh, we talked about the Black Hawk with the index finger. And then we talked a little bit about our in the waistband. I hope this clears up some confusion for you guys. Uh, again, these are going to be more practical. If you're a combat shooter, you're training uh, to prepare yourself for whatever situation, you're going to want a weapon, you know, combat situation, you're going to want a weapon uh, holster with retention. These are more competition, and then of course the inside the waistband is meant for concealed carry, okay? <sighs> Guys, find a holster that works. Uh, it's going to make a big difference in your training. Once you find one that works, try to stick with that, especially if it has retention. That way you're building muscle memory using that holster and it becomes second nature to defeat that retention when you go to draw your weapon, all right? Hope you guys enjoyed this. Enough said.
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you got something out of this content, please like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and drop us a comment. We always love to hear from you. If you want more, come join us at a live training event, either the basic course or the proving ground. Go to 3f7project.com to submit your application. Enough said.